what's up guys it's covert code here and welcome back to episode 13 of our zero to hero series last episode i covered how you can use tables in your scripts and this episode is a sort of continuation on the previous episode so just make sure to check that out if you have not watched that already because this video is about dictionaries okay so let me open the script from last time back up and clear everything and from the previous uh, video, uh, you could essentially describe anything you want using a table up until now, okay? So if I wanted to describe a dog, so dog details is equal to curly bracket, remember that. And let's say that uh, they have brown fur, okay? Uh, they are a small dog and, you know, the, the breed type is... I don't, know, I don't know, unknown or something like that, okay? So, you're describing a dog right here, okay? However, the thing with tables is they can be quite hard to read. So, if I wrote this and I didn't comment anything like this, um, so, if I didn't say uh, the fur color or, uh, you know, the size of the dog and the breed of the dog, you know, someone who didn't write this code would not be able to actually understand this. Especially if you did something like print dog details 1, okay? What is dog details 1? No one would know except you. And sometimes even you wouldn't know because uh, your code can get so complex that it just becomes hard to read. So the solution to this is dictionaries. They are just essentially easier to read tables, okay? Now, the thing with tables is that, remember, they always have something like this, okay? Uh, they are called indexes, and every single element in your table has one. And that's why you can actually access them using numbers. So, uh, index number 1 is brown, index number 2 is small, and index number 3 is unknown. Now, here's how you would do the same exact thing using dictionaries. So, uh, dog details okay is equal to and the fur color is equal to brown okay uh, the the size is going to be small okay and the breed is going to be unknown okay by the way the last element does not need a comma or you know a semicolon or something like that you can leave it out so don't worry about that okay and this is how you do the same thing. Now, if I wanted to actually check uh, index number one, this would not work because there is no index number one in the dictionary like before. There are only these indexes, okay? So we just change the indexes to words we can understand. So if I wanted to print out brown, I would do print dog details, okay? for color like this and you can actually see how easy this is to read because now you actually know what you're trying to access and fur color in this case is equal to brown so it's sort of like setting variables inside of the table itself um yeah pretty much it just makes it way easier to read it's pretty concise and you won't get confused you know when you're scripting and if you want to actually check uh you know the breed so you would do dog details uh, breed like this, and this would actually um, print out. Oh my bad, I forgot to add a two here. Okay, so uh, let me clear the output, and this would actually print out brown. Okay, so that's the fur color, and this would print out unknown, which is the breed. And if you want to add something new, you can't use table.insert anymore, or, uh, you know, any of the table functions we discussed previously, okay? That's because this is not a table, I mean, it is a table, however, um, you know, it's not the same. It doesn't run using indexes, okay? So there are several things which work with the table, which don't work with dictionaries. So the way you'd actually add something to the dictionary is like this. So you just say the name of the dictionary, so dog details two, and you use these square brackets like this, and use the quotation marks and you set it to something. It's like setting a variable inside of the dictionary. So if I want to say that dog's name is, uh, I don't know, uh, Rex or something, so pretty much all this does is it initializes a new element inside of the dictionary. So now imagine that we just created this, okay? Uh, Rex, like this. So 
if I print out the dog details um, dictionary, let me just clear out the output, a copy, paste, as you guys can see, you've got all of these, okay, just like tables. However, if I print out the dictionary after I add the, um, you know, the, the name element to it, it will actually print out that there's a new element inside. So two tables, this is before we added uh, the name element, and this is after we added the name element, just like that, okay? And that's how you would go about adding something to a dictionary. Now, the way you go about removing something from a dictionary is also different from tables, okay? So you could just do dog details to um, breed, okay? is equal to nil. So you're just setting this to non-existent. And if something is set to non-existent, it will automatically be removed from the dictionary. Okay, so if I just print that out again here and um, copy this, paste, and we open the last one, as you guys can see, there is no longer a breed element uh, or index inside of the dictionary. And that's because we set this to nil, and this is how you would go about removing stuff from dictionaries. Another handy thing, which I didn't really cover in the previous video, and I left this out intentionally so I can cover it in this video, is you can actually get the length of a table. And by length, I mean how many elements are inside of a table. So in this case, it would be three, okay? And in this case, it's also three. However, the difference is that you can't really use the same method of retrieving the length from a table. Um, you know, you can't really use the same methods, okay? So this is how you would get the length of the table. So print uh, dog details, okay? Just like that. And you would just add a hashtag in front of the table. And this is going to print out how many elements are inside of the table and it said three now if you would try to do this on dog details two it will not work okay so it'll say zero because as far as it's concerned you're not using the default um indexes here so these are not numbers it can't really count them okay and you would have to use a manual counter so you'd have to use a variable so counter is equal to zero okay and every time you add something to the dictionary you'd have to increment this by one every single time. And obviously de uh, decrease that every time you remove something. Um, that's really the only drawback I see with dictionaries. Uh, you know, you can't really get the length, but they are very, very handy to use. They're really easy to read. You know, you won't get confused. And I think they are better for beginners. Uh, you know, tables are simpler, sort of. They have more functions, but dictionaries are just easier to read. Okay, that's my take on the thing. So yeah guys, that's pretty much all I have uh, about dictionaries today. I would really appreciate if you guys just liked the video, uh, you know, and subscribe if you can. And please also leave comments in the comment section down below suggesting what videos I should make next. And I'll see you guys next time.